Welcome to Bruce Hurwitz Presents Meet the Experts. I'm your host, Bruce Hurwitz from Hurwitz Strategic Staffing. You can find us on the web at hsstaffing.com. I hope you'll consider us for all your staffing, career counseling, and speech writing needs. I am delighted to be joined today by Bob Tedi. We will be discussing leading with questions versus leading by telling. Meet the Experts is sponsored by PK CPAs. PK is a full service accounting firm. They provide accounting and consulting services to businesses ranging from startups to small and mid cap companies to nonprofits as well as high net worth individuals. Contact them today for a free consultation at pk cpas.com or call them at 973 882 8810. They will be happy to be of service. Bob, welcome to the program. Thank you, Bruce. Been looking forward to this. As have I. Please take a moment or two and introduce yourself to our viewers. Well, happy to do that. Uh, Bob Teedy, uh, live in the Dallas, Texas area. I've been on the staff of Crew for 49 years. I serve on the uh, global and US leadership development teams and uh, in 2012, back up 2006, I came across a book called Leading with Questions that forever changed my leadership. And uh, at this point, uh, the blog started in 2012, now in its eighth year and followed by leaders in 190 countries. So Bruce, that's a little bit about me. That is impressive. I do have one question. Well, I've got more than one question. Uh, but what is Crew? Crew is the uh, new name as of about eight years ago. The former name was Campus Crusade for Christ. And uh, we have uh, staff in about 25,000 staff in 190 countries uh, sharing uh, the teachings of Christ with students uh, around the world. Very nice. And I wouldn't have guessed that in a million years. <laughs> Many years ago, I heard a Nobel Prize laureate, a gentleman who had just won his Nobel Prize in physics. And he was asked, this was on the news, he was asked, to whom does he uh, owe the most for his success? And he said his mother. Why? Because unlike his friend's mothers, when he got home from school, they didn't ask, she didn't ask him, did you answer any questions today? She asked him, did you ask any questions today? And that resonated with me. And in my career counseling, I always tell candidates for positions that the question is more important than the answer. And I gathering that you agree with that. So I have a twofold question for you. First, how do you know what the right question is to ask? And what is the correct way to ask a question? Well, Bruce, both of those are, are great questions. You know, one of the things I've discovered is that the right question to ask is often a simple question. You know, sometimes you hear reporters ask a question and it's like their question is longer than the answer. You realize they're actually giving a speech and kind of then saying, do you agree with me? But uh, I've discovered some of the best questions and, and maybe it's because I'm a simple person are, are simple questions. Bruce, just to share a fun little story. Please. Uh, w, I, I heard this uh, not directly, but indirectly from uh, Bill Marriott, W.R. Marriott. And when he was 22 years old, he was an ensign in the Navy. He came home to the Marriott farm for a weekend and his father had then invited, uh, had invited then president Dwight D. Eisenhower to the family farm in Virginia to go pheasant hunting. I think everybody arrived on Friday night and Saturday morning, it, it turned out to be cold, windy and rainy. And they're sitting around the kitchen table kind of thinking, asking, what should we do? 
And uh, at some point, uh, Bill Marriott is standing over at the fireplace. Again, a Navy ensign, 22 years old. President Eisenhower gets up, walks over to the fireplace, says, Bill, what do you think? Bill Marriott, ever since, has said the four most important words in the English language are, what do you think? He saw there the brilliance of President Eisenhower. You know, he had led the Allied forces in the Normandy invasion, where he had to work not only with his own generals, which were challenged by themselves with like General Patton, but he also had to work with uh, the British leaders and generals and, and French president. And he saw the wisdom. Eisenhower was always curious, what do you think? And uh, Bruce, that's actually one of my favorite questions to ask, no matter what the topic is or the challenge, uh, the opportunity is to just ask people, hey, what do you think we might do? And, and then, of course, if you're going to ask, you've got to listen. Oh, Bruce, it just occurs to me. I had your first question. <laughs> Remind me of your second one. I was not uh, listening well enough. <laughs> not a problem. The question was, what's the best way to ask the question? I'll give you a scenario. Sure. I heard a, um, I, I, there is one thing I have to say, because if any of my former professors or colleagues at university should watch this, they would beat me over the head. De Gaulle was not president when uh, Eisenhower had a deal with him. He was the general. Okay. Um, Thank you. Thank no you. problem. No problem. <laughs> that would have gotten me into a lot of hot water. <laughs> I once, and I, I have a terrible memory. I can never remember the author. But I remember reading an article where someone said, if you want to be a leader in a room of strangers, you're at a conference. You want to have a leadership role and come across as a leader, prepare well, and be the per first person to ask a question. So you prepare, you have your question. Now it is, how do you ask the question? For example, I disagree with you. How do you disagree without being disagreeable? How do you agree without sounding like a psychopath? Again, a fabulous, fabulous setup there. Um, one of the principles I use is not to ask the why question when it comes to like, why Bruce do you think that way? Because asking the why question always kind of creates a defensiveness but asking the what or how question in place. And so in disagreeing, it's like, well, Bruce, could you share with me what caused you to take this position? It, it, it invites that I really am curious to find out your thinking, how you got there, but I'm not wanting to do it in an offensive way where I say, Bruce, why would you think that? Which is a question. And you could say, well, the two allow you to go to the same place, but, but one is inviting and the other one is, is like I say, I'm, it's challenging. And so asking what or how instead of why when you're addressing a person. Uh, you also brought up something, you know, every time you hear a speaker and there's a, maybe there will be a question and answer, maybe there won't be. But just to prepare, because I know as a speaker, when I say, are there any questions? I am always so thankful for that first person who puts their hand up and says, I have a question. Great. It just breaks the ice. Sure. And so um, you will always endear yourself to a speaker by asking that first question. And, uh, you know, and, and taking that, that dead air. Filling it with, here's a question. There's nothing worse than giving a presentation and then having dead silence. Nobody yeah. asks a question. That means nobody cares what you said. You impacted no one and put tail between leg and find the quickest way out. And then you ask, you know, how to ask. A, a phrase I like to use rather frequently is, Bruce, I'm curious. 
what would you say about, or what do you think about, or, you know, whatever I want to ask, but just that phrase, I'm curious, uh, creates, uh, I think, a, an atmosphere in which you can then ask the question. Also, I, I think it, it's helpful sometimes to, uh, you know, I'm curious, Bruce, can I ask you a question? Um, when we hear that, you know, sometimes our mind may be a thousand miles away and somebody asks a question and it's like halfway through the question, we first realize they've asked me a question and it's like, okay, what are they asking? Because I was actually deep in thought a long ways away. Whether I should have been or not, I was. But when somebody says, Bob, I'm curious, can I ask you a question? Okay, now they have my attention and then they can ask the question. So that's another thing I like to do just in terms of prefacing questions. And, and of course, uh, smiling does not hurt, it helps. I wanna get back to Ike and his question for the, I believe you said Ensign yeah. was, what would you do? What would you do? What do you think? What do you think? Think uh, we should do. That's a great way to get buy-in. So even if he agreed, it didn't matter because Mr. Marriott would have known that the president was taking his advice and accepted it, rejected it. At least he considered his opinion. Bruce, something very interesting, not my research, but uh, the research shows us, uh, sometimes when I'm speaking, I talk about two different decision-making processes. They each have three steps in them. The steps are just organized differently. In decision-making process A, leader makes decision. Step two, leader informs staff. Step three, leader asks, are there any questions? In decision-making process two, leader starts with saying, you know, we're going to be making some decisions in this area, but before we go to work on that, what input might you all have? In other words, leader starts by asking questions, then leader makes decision, then leader informs staff. And what the research shows is that if a leader will start with asking questions, staff, you know, you can get a variety of input from A to Z and the decision that you make won't necessarily be what everyone suggested. Obviously, there's going to be some people, it's opposite of what they suggested. But research shows that if they've been asked first prior to the decision, they feel respected and will actually, uh, the great majority will support the final decision, even if it disagrees with their input because they felt respected in being asked prior to the decision being made. Excellent. And, uh, you know, that your thought on Eisenhower uh, just stimulated that. He would ask first, what do you think? There you go. Then make the decision. Now, when you filled out the application, you said that viewers would learn two things. So I want to make sure we get to them because I'm curious. Okay. how you're going to viewers will learn how to lead with questions in 30 seconds. Explain. Bruce, yeah. Bruce, often when I'm speaking, I get a sense from the audience that they really would love to learn to lead with questions, but they kind of imagine they might have to get a master's degree in questionology. <laughs> and it's like, you know, a nice thought, but, you know, being a brain surgeon would be a nice thought, but probably not going to happen. And so when they, when I asked the audience, how many would like to learn to lead with questions in 30 seconds, almost every hand goes up. So I invite one up. So Bruce, can I invite you up today? <laughs> Absolutely. And, and, and then I always say, you know, I'm so glad, Bruce, it's you because I sense you have a photographic memory. You're only going to have to hear my four favorite questions one time and you'll have them memorized. So you're ready to go, Bruce. I'm ready to go. Here they are. Start the clock. First question, what do you think? Second question, what else? Third question, what else? Fourth question, what else? Bruce, do you have them memorized? I believe I do. <laughs> Share them with us. <laughs> what do you think? What else? What else? What else? 
Yes. Now, sometimes the audience thinks you can't ask people, what do you think? What else? What else? What else? And I say, well, of course, not in that rapid fashion, but imagine a conversation and there's some topic on the table. And I say, Bruce, what do you think about? And, and you give that first answer. And then I say, wow, Bruce, what else? And invariably, you will then share more. And then I might use some other forms. I might say, Bruce, I, I'm, I'm taking notes. P please continue. This is good. What, what else? And you'll give me more. And uh, I find that often it's the third and fourth question that gets to their gold nugget, their very best thought. And um, I realized that uh, in the past, I've made two mistakes. One is not asking people what they think. And again, I was saying, you know, how can you move from a leader who leads by telling to leading with questions? And we did it, Bruce, in 30 seconds is for a leader who's only thought their leadership paradigm is I'm here to tell the staff what to do. And that's been what they've done. If they can imagine their next meeting one-on-one or just with their staff team and just using those four questions, they will have moved from being a leader who leads by telling to a leader who leads with questions. I also discovered that even when I previously asked, what do you think? I didn't ask the second question or the third or the fourth. And what I discovered is that often when somebody asks us what we think, we roll out a safe answer to see how they treat it. And so Bruce said, I ask you, you know, what do you think about something? And you give me an answer. And I said, well, Bruce, that's dumb. Everyone knows that. Well, you're sorry you answered at all, but I'm not going to hear anything else. But when I say, wow, this is good, Bruce, what else? Well, you're feeling appreciated and respected. And, and now you're a little more relaxed to give me more. And by the time I get to the third or fourth, I not only get the gold nugget, but you're feeling that I'm thinking you're one of the most brilliant people that I've ever chatted with. And of course, that's what we like to do with those we're having conversations is to affirm, lean in and listen and learn. I'm laughing, not because of you, but because you reminded me of something. <laughs> I was invited to be on a podcast and I accepted. Probably shouldn't have, but I accepted. And the interviewer, for whatever reason, from his body language, had a chip on his shoulder. I knew that. I'm pretty good at reading body language. Not the best, but I'm pretty good. And he asked me, what is my opinion about, and I honestly don't remember what it was, all right? And I said, I don't have an opinion. I've never researched the topic. I don't know enough about it. And he went, absolute silence. He reached over. This was obviously a Zoom recording like we're doing it now. So I knew he was going for his mouse pad. He stopped the recording. He said, I'm sorry, this interview won't work. You'll be very embarrassed. I'm not going to put it on. And that was the end of it. Mm. So, but anyways, not important. So you've explained how to lead with questions in 30 seconds. Now teach us how to be better listeners in eight seconds. Well, Bruce, thank you for asking that. Um, I had to, it was to you, there. <laughs> had no choice. When I'm sharing this, I, I ask, uh, when you hear eight seconds, is there any sport that you think of? So Bruce, I don't know if there's a sport you think of. Uh, think rodeo. Oh, and, yeah, uh, okay. You have to stay on the bull for eight seconds. That's eight right. seconds, yeah. I don't consider rodeo a sport. I think of it as... Uh, <laughs> Self-imposed torture. <laughs> well, I'm smart enough not to get on a ball. Yeah, I never but, have, uh, never will. But, it, you know, even if you just watched it in passing, you don't have to be a fan. But, Bruce, you knew mm -hmm. you have to stay on I've the ball for eight seconds. Yeah. Eight seconds. And for a bull rider, and I'm talking about these are professionals. This is what they do. Uh, roughly 75% of them are knocked off before the eight seconds. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Now, where am I going with this? Uh, what I'm wanting to say is that for a bull rider, eight seconds is an eternity. Well, here's what's really interesting. Research shows again that when the average person asks a question, they only wait two or three seconds for an answer. And the silence so bothers them that if the person they ask the question doesn't answer in two or three seconds, they will either re-ask the question, ask another question, answer the question themselves, or just move on. And the really curious thing is with no awareness of what they've just done. And so when I say, I can help you be a better listener in eight seconds, it's like, again, when we ask a question, waiting eight seconds for an answer seems like an eternity. But ask the question and then relax, keep comfortable eyesight, count to yourself, not out loud, but to yourself, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Bruce, there's times I've gotten to 1,030. But the longer the silence, the better the answer. Now, of course, it depends on the question. You know, if I'm in your home and office and say, Bruce, which way to the men's room, restroom, <laughs> you're going to answer that in two or three seconds. Yeah. But if I yeah. said, Bruce, and, and let's just say you've never been asked this question before. And I say, mm -hmm. Bruce, what would you say have been some of your greatest failures? Mm -hmm. But the lessons learned have led to great success. Mm -hmm. If you've never been asked that, it might take longer in three seconds it might even take longer than eight but if i'll wait i'm going to have the benefit of hearing some great wisdom mm -hmm. and so ask the question count to yourself it's funny Just, you should it's funny you should say that because i was once a witness in a uh, class action lawsuit and i had to give a deposition and the advice that I got from every lawyer I asked was count to five, count to 10 before you answer. Even if you know the answer, it's a very simple yes or no, it happened, it didn't happen. Wait and then give the answer. Because if you get into the habit of waiting, then when they ask you a tough question to try to trick you up, it won't sound like you're concerned about the answer you're mm. gonna give because when they asked you, where's your office located? You waited five seconds to answer. But there was something else that you reminded me of. You said eight seconds is an eternity. I say four seconds is a lifetime. So now I will <laughs> ask you a question. Did you serve in the military? Bruce, I did not. Okay, no, that's fine, it's okay. When you pull the pin on a grenade the first time and you throw it, they tell you it will take four seconds for the grenade to explode. And you are in a cement pit with a sergeant who is there to protect you because nine times out of 10, the person who has just thrown the grenade for the first time is an idiot. <laughs> and they think that four seconds is one, two, three, four, and it hasn't gone up. So they want to look up and see what's happening, and the sergeant pulls you down. Four seconds takes a long time when you are expecting a, a definitive outcome. Yes, yes. So that's one thing you reminded me of. The other thing was when I was a fundraiser. I was taught you make the ask. Bob, will you give make a donation of $500 to this, that, or the other? And then you shut up. Because the first person who speaks loses. If I'm waiting, I could say, listen, if $500 is too much, we'd be grateful for anything you could give and I'll walk over with 50 bucks. If I keep quiet, I've got a chance of getting the 500 or at least of having a conversation. So what you're saying is correct for numerous. I think it's correct for everything. 
I appreciated the advice you got from attorneys on giving a deposition. I hadn't heard that before, but it makes perfect sense. Well, I told the uh, the lawyer actually asked me uh, during the deposition for the other side, if you will. Uh, she said, did you get advice? Did you discuss your testimony with anyone? Wait five seconds. I'm not going to do it now because <laughs> this would be silly. I said, yes. And they also said, answer the questions she asks. So I said, yes, I didn't say other lawyers. And she said, from whom? And I said, other lawyers. What did you ask? And I'm waiting five seconds. Now. What advice can you give me when testifying? And they all said to wait a certain number of seconds. Most said five, some said 10, one said 30. And she said, well, why aren't you waiting 30 seconds? I mean, she was just surprised. It was from her body language, you could see that she was just as a person curious. And I didn't wait 30 seconds to answer. I said, because if I wait 30 seconds between the time you ask the question and the time I start answering the question, we'll never get out of here. <laughs> and she just laughed, all right? So, that is the answer. Great story. Episode. Great story, Bruce. What we've got both. We got a few minutes left. What haven't I asked you that you wish I had? Well, Bruce, that's that's always a terrific question. Um, one of the questions I wish you asked is, uh, Bob, have you written any books? And uh, I've written three. And, and Bruce, uh, I have nothing to sell because everything I do in social media, including my books, are free ebooks, free to be downloaded on my blog. And I uh, also invite people to subscribe to my blog. It's free. What Leading I'm going to do is share the screen with your contact information. So you continue on. Okay. Well, leadingwithquestions.com is uh, followed by leaders, as I shared earlier, in 190 countries, and uh, now in its eighth year. And, and here's the promise. Uh, every Monday and Thursday mornings, depend, at least if you live in the US, uh, into your inbox will come what I call turnkey ready questions that you can immediately turn around to ask colleagues or staff or clients or prospects or friends or family. Not that one of those questions can be used with all of those, but they're always questions that you can turn around and use. I, I stay away from rhetorical questions. I'm wanting to give leaders to put into their leadership toolbox questions that they can use immediately. And uh, so if you subscribe every Monday and Thursday, you'll be joining leaders from around the world who are gonna receive those turnkey ready questions. And well, then at that same website is where you can request the free download of, of one, two, or all three of my free eBooks. The most recent one is Now That's a Great Question. And uh, two of them, including Now That's a Great Question, are also available as free audio books. You can download them as an MP3, like a podcast, and listen as you uh, walk, run, bike, or Bruce, in the old days when we actually used to drive to work. Shh. <laughs> that, if there's one thing I like about COVID, I live in Metro New York. I don't miss at all going into Manhattan. But anyways, Bob, I thank you profusely for coming on. You have provided a wealth of valuable information, and I'm sure all of our viewers appreciate it. Well, Bruce, thank you for the privilege. It's been an honor to be with you. This has been a fun conversation. You are a great host. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that, especially coming from you. I'm Bruce Hurwitz. Thank you for watching. And please, as always, stay focused on success.